Hi, and welcome back to FemLogic AI. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about plugins. So I really love plugins. Um, it's basically think of Chrome extensions for ChatGPT. And so we're going to go over how to install them. Uh, some of my favorite ones, there are thousands of them out there at this point. I think when ChatGPT first came online, there were 12. And now there are hundreds of pages of them um, in the store. So we'll go over how to go get to all of those things. But uh, for today, Plugins is the is the name of the game. So uh, stand stand by, and we're going to show you how it's done. All right. So we are going to go with plugins. So to start with, I'm going to show you how to enable the plugins and make sure they're all working. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to these three dots right here. Click. We're going to go to settings and beta. We're going to go over to beta features and go ahead and turn all of these on. So uh, your view may look a little different depending on when you're watching this video because they make updates all the time. But at the time of this video, you want to go ahead and turn on Browse with Bing. That is how you connect to the internet and browse with uh, Bing. You also have plugins, which is what we're going to talk about today. And then we also have what used to be Code Interpreter, which is Advanced Data Analysis. Also, all really cool, tools, really cool tools, and we'll go over all of them there. So um, like I said, these are, think of these as independent things that you can do. So they do not, you cannot combine them. You can either use Browse with Bing, plugins, or the Code Interpreter, the Advanced Data Analysis. You cannot use all three together at this time but I'm sure they're gonna get there. So go ahead and enable all of those. And then I go over here. And so right now I have some stuff that um, I have checked. And you can see that I've got like some guys up there, but you're probably gonna see something that looks like, like this, no plugins enabled. So in order to enable a plugin, you gotta click this drop down box and you will have to add some in there. As you can see, I play with them a lot. You can download as many as you want, but you can only use three at a time. So you can only ch check three at a time. So you can make those adjustments. When you do get ready to use a new one, you will have to create a new chat to make those adjustments. So, but for now, let's just go over something really simple and easy. And so I'm gonna show you how to add those in. So when you go into plugin store, there's all kinds of plugins in here. I mean, there are, you know, like, like I said, I really like Ask Your PDF. As you can see, it says uninstall. If I uninstall it, it'll come up and say install. And I click install and we're good to go, right? It's in there. Yay. So um, we already went over Ask My PDF. Or ask your PDF. So I'm going to leave that one off for today, but that is a really good one. I do really like um, these uh, new ones I'm going to show you here. So you can either use Kayak or Expedia. So I like Kayak a lot because I think that, um, you know, I like how, if you're not familiar with Kayak, it's a site that basically searches all the other sites like Expedia and, you know, all the travel sites for the best deals and it pulls them all together. And then it'll say, okay, according to all these sites, like, you know, booking.com and hotels.com, here are the best prices on all the things. So by installing Kayak, what I'm going to do is try to get it to create a travel itinerary for me, as well as tell me the best deals on hotels and if there's any packages out there. And so we can do all of this in chat GPT. So let's get started. So then we're going to go back over here. And so because we just downloaded it, um, it's going to say, I, I know you probably want to use Kayak. Not Like I said, you can use three of these, but for this particular one, we're just going to use Kayak. And so we're going to go over here and these are free downloads. And so you just connect them to your site. You do have to have the paid chat GPT account to enable plugins. And so at the time of this video, it's about $20 a month, which is worth it to me, but you'll have to make that uh, distinction yourself. So we go over here and we say, okay, let's see. I want to say actually as it will go with our format. So I'm going to say I'm a parent of a 10 year old who loves to swim. Plan a trip in Austin, Texas with two adults and two kids uh, flying from Nashville, Tennessee to Austin. Austin. Um, make sure the flight is direct. And the hotel is kid friendly. And then I'm going to say, all right, well, now what else do I want? Um, say, um, 
let's see, yeah, we'll, we'll start with this. And then I'll say, uh, you know, let's just see what it is. We told him I love to swim. I won't specify that I want a swing pool. Let's just see. Um, I'll say, make sure the hotels are close to kid-friendly kid attractions. All right, let's see what it gives us. And so I'm not going to tell uh, ChatGPT anything else. I look for it to come back and say, hey, what dates are you wanting to travel? Flight, return flight to Nashville, by any specific, all right. It says, so it asked me, what's the departure dates? So I, yeah, we're gonna leave, you know, leaving December 9th and returning December 15th. Just make some stuff up there. Um, like we, the budget, I'll say what kind of budget? I'll say medium priced hotel. I don't want to go too far. And any specific kid attractions you would like? I'm going to say water parks. She really likes water parks. Not a big fan of museums, so we'll, we'll skip that. And say, what's a preference of hotel star rating? Um, I'll, I'll say um, minimum of a three star rating. And I'm assuming this is three out of five. So, <laughs> so let's see what it does now. So it asked me for some additional information. Now it enables Kayak without me having to tell it because it knows because I enabled it and told it that this chat is going to be using that plugin. And so it comes in here and it kind of built this up, which you're probably saying right now, you could totally just go out to kayak.com and do the same thing. And so it says option one, here's what you could do. Um, return, all right, look at that. $176 a person, that's not bad. And it gives me links to where I can book if I want to go through American Airlines, depending on what time I want to leave. And then, all right, well, that's cool. So I can book all this. Now let's see what it does. It's giving me hotels. It's in Alaska Air, that's interesting. From Nashville to Austin. Well, I guess somebody's got to fly into Austin, right? <laughs> and let's see, oh, $482 a person. That's a, that's a little bit more. All right, uh, and you can book, book the option. You can click this link, all right. So now it's saying, it's saying, let's kind of find a hotel for you. Near water parks, a minimum of three stars in Austin. And so it says, yes, I want you to proceed. You have all the info, yes. I'm gonna say proceed. Let's see what it gives me. So, so it's given me flight options. Now it's giving me hotel options. And so I bet if I asked it to, it would give me restaurant recommendations. And so I'm gonna ask it to them for that for a second. So once I get hotel, I'm gonna say, I want to make sure so I can actually start going in and typing that if I want to, but it's going to give me, so here he goes. All right. All right. Look at this. The Saunders at the Cathedral, it's four stars, you know, all right. The residents in Marriott, you know, and I could even say, I want places that have free breakfast because that's something, you know, 10 year olds really like is free breakfast. <laughs> but, all right. So we go through here and he's giving you a whole bunch of hotel options where I can immediately click and book those if I want to. Okay, I'm going to say, um, I am going to book the Hilton Garden. Garden Hotel. Can you make uh, an itinerary? I spelled that wrong. Let's see what it does if I just like itinerary and kid-friendly spell things wrong clearly. All right, let's see what it, what it gives me. So I've got hotel, flight, now let's see what it's going to give me an itinerary for. And, I'll, and I could have given it more specifics too around like I want kid friendly, you know, um, you know, focus around things that, you know, are early in the morning. You know, maybe your family does better early in the morning. Maybe you like to sleep in, make sure nothing's before noon. Uh, you know, this has been super helpful on places like I really like things like this when I go to places like Europe or places that I am not familiar with at all. Um, so I like to make sure that there's not something that's going to trip me up. Like, um, you know, maybe everything doesn't open until noon. <laughs> So we're going to go through here. So it is actually, I told it I'm staying at the Hilton Garden Hotel. I'm flying into Austin and it is generating an itinerary for me. Since it did not come back with any other questions, I am going to assume that it's got all the information it needs and it will come back. So it is generating. Let's see, oh, there it went. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, so it says on day one, you arrive in the morning, you can explore nearby areas, eat dinner at a kid-friendly restaurant. Um, so I like that it said eat dinner at a kid-friendly restaurant. So I'm gonna say 
add kid restaurants at near my daily I'm going to call it an event schedule and see if it barks at me. All right, so we're going to go in here. And so we can go out here and make it however we want. So you can go through this. You can tweak and play and do all that stuff. But you can see the power of this. Um, sometimes it's just getting started for me. You know, like I find it very overwhelming when you have 10 pages of, you know, hotels. And what I really want to know is, you know, like, you know, things that, you know, my kid would like or why we're going there. Or if I'm going for a convention, I want to make sure we're less than a mile from, you know, this particular convention center so I don't have to rent a car or something like that. And so those kind of things are very useful. And so you can use stuff like this. And so, oh, look at this. Arrive, check in. It's giving me dinner. It's going to say dinner at text mess. It's close and it's kid friendly. Oh, I like this. So this is very handy, you know, as, as opposed to me pulling up the Yelp app wherever I am and say find food near me and then going around. You know, if you're a better planner than me, you may even get restaurant reservations and things like that. And so it can give you those contact information to go ahead and make those restaurant reservations so you're not doing all this searching. So really powerful tool. So let's do another one. Okay, so the next plugin we're gonna go over is called Show Me. And so as we have before here, we've got all our data. So like I said, you have to create a new chat and you have to go over here and you have to click on the plugins. And it's not like, there you go. All right, click on this little guy right here. And so we don't need Kayak anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. Like it's still in there. I can re-enable at any time, but I like to just only use I feel like it's a little bit faster if I just use one at a time or not necessarily one or just the ones that I need to use at a time. So one of my favorite ones, and you can go out to the App Store and get this, um, not App Store, I guess it's the plugin store, and it's called Show Me. And so here's why I like Show Me. So what Show Me does, and as you can see, I get a little icon there. What Show Me does is it allows you to ask anything and show me how it works. So I find this really useful when I am trying to do math and I haven't with my you know child's math and I haven't done that in years or history or um, you know show me the breakdown of you know how the world you know World War One went you know like things like that where I don't really know all the details but it breaks it down. And so today we're going to show you how to, you can use this to learn. Stuff stuff. And so I find this really useful. I'm a visual person, so um, they are not the fanciest diagrams out there, but they, uh, I know, will get better over time. So if you're going to go over here, and I'm going to say, like, I know nothing about health. I'm not nursing or anything like that, but I'm going to say, show me how the human body works. I'm going to say, when you uh, drink water. Let's see what it says. All right. So I didn't tell it. Give me a diagram. I just said, show me how the human body works when you drink water. And let's see what it's going to give me. My guess is there's going to be a decent little diagram coming up. Um, you know, all right, here we go. And so I think this would be incredibly useful. Um, I work a lot with network infrastructure and having to deal with things like that. And so um, trying to explain how all the pieces integrate into a network infrastructure and being able to diagram it like this would be tremendously helpful. So look at that. All right. So, you know, this is a very, um, yeah, not a lot of <laughs> dimensions here going on, but it does allow me. So it does. It says it goes in your mouth, you're drinking, goes to your esophagus. It's transporting to your stomach, absorbing. So this is, this is useful information, particularly if you're trying to explain it to a child. You can click to view this in a new tab. So if you needed this for a particular document, you can do that. Let's try a new one. And so I'm going to click new chat. It's going to assume that I still want to use this because until I enable, uh, disable it, it's going to assume that I'm going to continue using it. So I'm going to say, um, show me how, I'm going to say chat GPT works. Let's see what it says. This should be interesting because I'm asking it how it, <laughs> show me a diagram of yourself. <laughs> so, all right, so show me how ChatGPT works, but you can really ask it anything, and I really like how it just draws it out for you, and um, if you maybe sometimes I feel like learning style, you know, everybody has a little bit different learning style, so maybe if your kid's struggling with one way or you're struggling with one way, try a diagram. This is my, you know, my brain thinks in pictures, and so that makes sense to me. So, okay, so this is a better diagram. It's not as vertical there. All right, so we've got user interacts with ChatGPT. They put in inputs, it processes, 
and then it generates a response that goes back to ChatGPT. So you can see you've got your circular information here. But what's coming from this process is it's touching the data model as well as the compute interface. And so this is awesome. So, you know, ch chat GPT, it's generative pre-trained transformer. And so that's what it's doing here. It's that generative pre-trained transformer. So awesome. So want to learn something new? Try this one out. I really like it. I'm a nerd, so I can't help myself. <laughs> All right, let's try another one. All right, so the last one I'm going to show you is Instacart. That's right, Instacart. Um, I know that uh, many of you, have, particularly during COVID and uh, the recent years, have probably used some form of, you know, Amazon, you know, groceries, delivery, you know, Amazon Fresh, you know, Whole Foods, Instacart, uh, whatever your preference is. But you can actually use Instacart now. So it's pretty cool inside ChatGPT. So again, using that same model, I'm going to go over here and I believe that I do have to uninstall this guy right here. I always like to, like I said, get rid of the ones you're not using, or at least, un and then I'm going to type in Instacart. And so maybe if I can spell it right. <laughs> so Instacart. So I'm going to install Instacart. All right. So this is really cool. So I know you all have been in this situation where you're like, what are we going to have for dinner? What do we have in the fridge? Like, I don't know. And so you're like, all right. Um, and so I'm just like, and many times I'm like, you know what? I really love one, you know pasta with, you know, Alfredo sauce. And so I'll say, show me a recipe. I'm going to show me how to make, I'm going to say, show me how to make, I'm going to say pasta with uh, Alfredo sauce. Spelled that wrong. Show me pasta with Alfredo sauce and chicken list all of the ingredients. Again, I spelled things wrong. It doesn't matter. It's going to fix it, which is great because spelling has never been. There it says, sure. All right, so it's got all this stuff in here. Now, all right, that looks really good. A pound of pasta, a pound of chicken, heavy cream, cooking instructions on how to do that. And I'm going to say, all right, and now, all right, make the sauce. I can do this. Yeah, I'm not a cook, but I think I can probably handle pasta. So, <laughs> and this is actually homemade pasta, not pasta in a jar. So that's awesome. And now it asked me, would you like to create a shopping cart list? And I would say yes, because that's really what this is all about. The Instacart. So then it jumps in and it says, okay, I'm going to pull up all the ingredients that you need to make this recipe. You can make any recipe you want. It's going to pull them all in. And then the beauty of this, what I really love, it's going to show you all the things you need, but then it's going to give you the option to uncheck things. So maybe I already have, you know, butter in the fridge. Maybe I already have heavy cream. I can uncheck those things and only select the items that I have. So pretty awesome. You can do this for any of your items here. And it says, all right, it's giving me an Instacart list. All right, happy cooking. And then it's going to go through here. And then I can click here. And say, so here's your Instacart list. Now, it does take me outside of ChatGPT and pulls me over to Instacart. But look at this. It's got it. My zip code. My zip code's wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> and I'm going to say, all right, let's see. Ooh, and it's even got a picture of what it's going to look like. It's got all the stuff that I might need on here. And then it says, you know, a cup of heavy cream. And so then I can go in here and I can say, you know, I already have Parmesan at home. I don't need that. So I can uncheck it. So uncheck that item or, you know, I do need pepper. You know, I can add all these things and I can add all ingredients to the cart and I can check out right here. So I'm at work. I decide I want to go through here. I'm going to do have to sign in with Google. And I am not an Instacart customer at the time. I'm a pretty loyal uh, Amazon Fresh customer just because of my role. But I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say, OK, yeah, I did have an Instacart account, of course, with COVID. And so I'm going to come in here and it's got all my stuff. And so then I can check out. I can, you know, however I want to, you know, add stuff to it. But that is tremendously helpful to me to not have to deal with, you know, having all the groceries. Now you could do multiple recipes and multiple grocery lists, add whatever you want. Maybe, you know, we eat a lot of fruit, so we might add some fruit in there or some other things. But in general, this is going to be a really cool tool where it gives you all the things that you can do. So I really like this one a lot. 
A couple of last things I want to show you before we go on this video is futuretools.io. I think it's a fantastic database of all of the AI tools uh, out there, probably not all of them, but lots and lots of them. You know, uh, Matt does a great job maintaining this list and people can submit their own. So you can go through here and you can search by category. You can find little tools, but now there's also a plugin database. So really awesome. You go over here and it's myaiadvantage.com slash the dash ultimate dash chat GPT dash plugin dash database. That's a mouthful. So I'm going to put link it, link it below, but I want you to see that this has the same type of knowledge here. It's got, you know, uh, everything from ABC mouse. It does look like they are in alphabetical order, but it does tell you about what the plugin does, the features that it has, um, you know, what category it's in. So you can filter through this website as you like, and it's a really good resource as well. So um, I'm not sure how they're maintaining this, but I do think uh, it's really cool and I like it a lot. So. That's my input for today, and I hope you all enjoyed. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed what we went over today on plugins. Please let me know, like, comment if there's anything you'd like to see. Um, I'll keep researching these plugins, and as I find ones that I think are useful, I'll put them out there and we'll do one of these videos here and there. And um, I know you all love the automation videos, so there's more coming with that. And I know you saw the Zapier plugin, and I will get to that, uh, but that's a whole episode in itself. So you know how I love Zapier. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, like, subscribe, and um, let us know how uh, we are able to save you time and put that time to something that's going to bring you more joy. So I'd love to hear your stories. Thanks. Have a good one.